In this video, I'll be looking at uh, some of the launchbox paneling options and uh, we're going to basically test how these work on a NURP surface. Um, for the modeling of the surface, I actually used uh, just simple curves. You can see that these were the sections that I used and I just lofted these so that we can get some movement and see how the paneling actually worked with uh, launchbox. And uh, I'm going to be testing um, these operations uh, simultaneously with the surface division points so that we can see how the panels actually correspond with the grid. So the surface uh, division actually comes by default uh, with um, Grasshopper tools. So if you go to um, uh, divide surface options, so divide surface is basically located under surface utilities and uh, I just gave uh, 20 by 20 grid to this so that we can see some points being populated on it. Now one overall uh, information I need to mention about uh, LaunchBox surface tools is that um, these division panels are not isomorphic so uh, basically the surface uh, does not close on itself so that the panels also uh, at the ends of the surface uh, are always going to be uh, trimmed and we, we're going to actually see this in action. So I'm going to hide the surface that I have and leave the grid on. So the uh, we're going to go over some of the panels and see how they work. So the first one is going to be the diamond panels. So when I turn this on and uh, turn off my surface, you will see that the, the way LaunchBox uh, actually uh, computes the, these panels is uh, using a grid of uh, points on the surface as well. So in our case, uh, the resolution is uh, one to two in the diamond panel. So if I uh, have, let's say 10 points uh, or 10 divisions in vertical and horizontal direction, um, visualizing it with, uh, let's say 10 points each, let's try this. Um, this actually kind of works. So um, I get these points in the middle of these panels and we also get triangular panels on the corners. Uh, that do not um, correspond and the nice thing about this is you can actually extract them so you can do something else with the triangles and something else with the diamond panels. Now uh, let's look at the hexagon cells and this one is kind of interesting because um, if I have let's say high resolution 20 by 20 grid uh, you will see that the hexagon cells do not uh, correspond to the grid. Now in my case it looks like it it does, but this value, the T parameter, is actually added to uh, to kind of distort the diamond panel. So the hexagon cells are actually a modification of the diamond uh, diamond panels. So in this case, if you uh, increase the T parameter, what's happening is that these evaluations um, are kind of moving away from each other, right? So this point is evaluated, but it's moving along the surface to a higher value or not. Uh, or lower value simultaneously so that each cell is constructed out of six corner points. And this kind of uh, gives away how the hexagons are constructed. So if I change this T parameter, it will never overlap with any points on the surface. And these, uh, if, if you run this uh, script on a NURB surface as well, these cells are not flat. So uh, extracting them uh, or modeling them into a surface, you would need, uh, let's say, extrude to point, and you can extrude each uh, cell into um, a center, but uh, in my case, I'm missing some of those as well. So um, I have 18 centers, but uh, these do, did not get uh, picked up. Um, now let's look at quad panels. Uh, quad panels are pretty straightforward. If you have a 10 by 10 grid, uh, you will see that they correspond really nicely with the surface division. You can also get the same uh, effect with isotrim. So isotrim is the default surface division uh, tool for grasshopper. So if you go to uh, domain, uh, divide domain squared, you can actually construct 10 by 10 division and supply the surface, this would ex exactly be uh, uh, the same. Uh, but I'm seeing actually somehow uh, 
this similar uh, configuration. The reason is because Isotrim normally gives you uh, surfaces that are uh, that are chunks of the nerve surface, so they are not flat. Uh, but in this case, the quad panels are always uh, trying to be. Um, they have flat edges, so they are uh, they are quad. But of course, uh, they have linear edges. But these are these cannot be flat if you run run them on a nerve surface as well, because um, these uh, four points, in our case, are not coplanar. I'm going to turn this off as well. Uh, now, random uh, panels are uh, pretty interesting. They also correspond with, uh, let's say, a uniform division in one direction. In, in our case, that would be the U direction. So if I supply say, more divisions in the U direction, these uh, somehow are similar in width. And increasing the vertical divisions kind of gives you different, um, different panels. Kind of scattered around each uh, each vertical division, and you can further customize this by uh, playing around with the random seeds. So what's happening is that you can see the uh, V divisions are kind of randomized, but the U divisions are fixed. So this doesn't give you full randomization in both directions in that case. Uh, skew quads uh, work similar to the uh, hexagons, and they um, are actually a modification of the rectangular uh, quad division. So if the T parameter is one, you can see that it's giving us the regular quad division. And by changing this to a different value, let's say 0 0.5, you get skewed panels. And making these as uh, zero, uh, you would actually get triangles on the corners and you would get um, these nice uh, distorted quads on the end. And I believe you can also extract these uh, edges where it could become a triangle or a quad. And you can also get these quads to behave in a different way. So this is kind of a nice tool in that sense. Um, that is also uh, kind of a modification of the, of the quad panels. The next tool I'm going to look at is the staggered quad panels. Uh, and this one is um, uh, kind of giving the effect of um, the random quad panels, but uh, in this case, it's kind of like a brick uh, brick lay uh, on on a surface. And you can see that the divisions um, are equally distributed according to the, the surface curvature, and we are getting uh, kind of control over uh, how many divisions we want, vertical or horizontal. And um, this can also create some uh, mistakes, I think, when you have a really curved nerve surface, but increasing resolution also gives nice effects. Uh, I have three uh, panels to cover. These are going to be uh, triangle panels A, B, and C. Um, I have B on top, so let's start with that. B is kind of, um, kind of this, um, uh, triangular, um, let's go to 10, so that we can overlap it with the grid. So it's kind of uh, similar to the diamond pattern, but we have um, the quads that are not flat converted into triangles. So each of these panels will be flat in our case, which is kind of a, a nice transformation. And if I switch to panel C, um, this converts each quad panel uh, in a different way uh, by basically getting a center point and moving each edge to the center of each quad panel. So in that case, this is also giving us nice triangles. Now the last one is the triangle panels A and the way this transforms the quad panels is by creating a diagonal connection between some of these points. Um, and you, you will see that you, you can, you're actually converting the quad into two triangles. The difference between the A and the B is uh, basically B converts a diagonal uh, diamond pattern uh, using a vertical division. Um, but the triangle panel A uses a quad panel and a diagonal division to make those into uh, triangles. And the C, uh, basically gets a quad panel uh, converted into four triangles by extruding each edge to a center point. 
So that th those are basically the fun fundamental differences between those. And um, it's really nice actually that these tools are automatically built in so that you can work on different paneling options. Uh, in a future video, I'll be covering some, uh, some tessellation options using uh, some of these uh, patterned uh, surface divisions. So if you want to get a um, notification about that video, please uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions about any of these tools that I covered, please uh, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.